I've noticed that on my camera, when I pull the little um, screen out, I feel like I just monitor it the whole time. Like I feel like I need to be looking like right at the lens. Like I've been going back and watching older videos that I put out and I feel like I'm just staring like off a little bit. So I've just like completely like turned the screen around so I don't, I'm not tempted to look at any of that. And we'll just trust that I stay in focus. I, I trust the camera for the most part. So I think, I think we'll be good. All right, what's up guys? My name's Grant Borland. And today I want to show you a quick way of making sub booms. Sub booms are used in a variety of genres. I like to use it in like cinematic music and trailer music. Basically it's just like a deep, a deep punch underneath things, you know, like you'll hear it in intros and trailers and things like that. Maybe you'll hear like an intro, you'll hear a drone or a pad and then you'll hear these deep just like booms every like, you know, four to eight bars or whatever it is. And editors like to cut to that kind of thing. But that's sub booms. I want to show you how I like to make those with this tool from Waves called Submarine. It's a plugin I downloaded not too long ago, but I I really have only recently been using it for this kind of thing. I thought it was pretty useful and I wanted to show you guys how I like to use it to make these types of sound effects. Maybe you've been writing music for a while and you're uh, you're using different samples that like you'll buy from sample packs and things of that nature, but you want to start making your own custom sound effects. You want to make your music a little bit more unique, a little bit more you, but you don't really know like how to do sound design or where to even begin with that kind of thing. I kind of want to show you guys how I would personally approach making a, a sub boom sound effect for music like this. It's it's pretty easy using this tool. I mean, there's a variety of different ways you can make this kind of sound or achieve this effect. This is definitely not the only way to do this. Like, you don't need this plugin, but I just thought it was pretty cool and it was pretty fast for me. Like, you know, I'll, I'll throw uh, source audio in there and I'll just start, you know, playing around with like maybe some of the presets or some of the knobs on it. And I started getting into that kind of territory, which I thought was really useful. So I want to show you guys how I do that. I want to take this Zoom H5 recorder and just go around my apartment recording sounds. Like, I don't know, I'll, I'll get creative with it, but you know, maybe I'll just, you know, knock on certain things. I don't know, maybe close my oven door, like the slam of the oven door, things like that. I'll go out there, I'll get creative. I'll just walk around the apartment and see what kind of source audio I get. But from there, I'll go ahead and I'll clean and chop up all the, the recordings and I'll make it all organized for myself. So then we can go back into the DAW and just pull the one shot samples into Logic and then we'll start processing it. Hopefully we can make something cool with it. All right, let's, uh, let's go record some sounds.
Okay, so we're back. We've recorded sounds around the apartment, and then I've gone ahead and I've, you know, kind of cleaned up and chopped up the audio. So I've got 48 samples or, or bits of source audio we can use for our sound effects. So I'll probably, you know, pick a few, layer a few for each sound effect that we make. But yeah, it's cool. So we've got a lot to work with, a lot to pull from. So let's just jump right into it. Let's start making some, uh, some sub booms. Since sub booms are like, more low frequency material. I would recommend either listening on like a pair of studio monitors or headphones. You know, we'll keep in mind that like good sound effects are gonna kind of translate to different sets of speakers. But as I'm kind of like sculpting and crafting these, you might not be hearing, you know, all those bits of information if you're just listening on phone speakers. So that's what I would recommend, but either way, you'll kind of uh, get the feel of how I, I use this plugin. So let's just dive right into the session. And uh, as you see, I've got a folder here, uh, it says unprocessed. It's 48 samples, so I've kind of just gone ahead and organized it based on what I was recording. So, you know, the basket, coffee table, couch, microwave, so on and so forth. So let's just go ahead, let's start, I guess, with some of these samples. You know, not that interesting, but if I uh, drag one of these into Logic, let's go ahead and start working with it. So... So yeah, not interesting, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to apply Submarine from Waves to this, and this is what we got. So I'll play it through again, not much has changed. Um, you know, they do give you some presets, so if you wanted to just kind of mess around with some of the presets, you could get into it that way. But I think we're going to start out just diving right into the plugin without any, without any presets. So. I'll make it 100% wet so we can hear what it's doing. Like if you're on a phone, I doubt you're hearing that, but we've got the dry wet knob, we've got the drive knob, which is going to add like saturation or distortion to it, and then dynamics would be kind of like a compressor. Now you have the option right here to switch between a mono sub and a stereo sub. For this kind of thing, I think I prefer a uh, mono sub. Like I kind of like to have those deep elements kind of in the center of the mix uh, as I'm writing music. And then like other low elements that could be spread out might be like things like percussion and things of that nature. So I kind of try to keep like the sub booms and like the synths a little more center and then everything else kind of spreads out a little bit farther. And then a lot of like your more high frequency information, that, that stuff can kind of be spread uh, left and right a little bit wider. I think it makes things sound a little bit bigger to kind of keep the low elements in the middle. So for this, I'm just gonna stick to mono sub. If you're trying to make your own subs, I recommend playing around with it. Maybe try some stereo things, see if you like it. But for me, in this video, I'm gonna stick to mono for now. But yeah, let's hear what we got. So I've got the mix knob like yeah, 94.5. So it's mostly that sub information, but you do hear that little bit of the dry sample under there too. So it kind of almost sounds like it's got that little punch or that little tick, which would cut through nicely. So we got that. Um, let's just start playing around with these other uh, parameters. Nice, and you've got your frequency range below there too. Um, so you know it's kind of affecting 20 to 150 hertz, which is coming through on my monitors pretty well. I don't know about um, your phone or headphones or whatever, but it's it's sounding pretty good so far. Cool, I like that. Let's just go ahead and layer in something else. Maybe one of the paper towel samples. And maybe it's just the way I like to work, but I kind of, with like like hits and stuff like this, I like to line everything up to a bar. I think it just makes, uh, or it ensures that I'm like, my samples are going to be in time with each other. Everything's going to sound like coherent. So that's the paper towel sample. We'll do the same thing. Let's treat it the same way. Maybe I'll use a preset on this. Uh... That sounds cool. I dig that. Let's 
let's uh, go ahead and add a little bit of Evan Tide's Black Hole. This is a reverb I really like a lot, and sometimes it sounds cool on these kind of sound effects. It makes it sound deep and cinematic. So with the reverb plugin. That's cool, it's got a cool tail to it. Let's listen to this again. Kind of want to add a little bit of compression to this too. See, I think a lot of this like sound design and making your own sound effects, I think it's a lot of just like playing around, see what works. Like it's all about kind of practicing. Like some of the sound effects I'll make, I won't like at all and I'll just scrap them. Um, and then other times I feel like I get lucky and I get something that's like, that sounds really usable. So I mean, what you're seeing is kind of just like a raw process of me just testing things out. I don't really know what to expect. I'm kind of just playing around and if it sounds cool, like awesome. If not, then we try something else. So, uh, but yeah, I'm gonna add a little bit of compression to this. I'm just gonna quickly pull up a preset to save time. Let me try something else too. Um, it sounds it sounds pretty cool, um, but maybe we can go ahead and take one of these coffee table hits. Now this is just just an idea that I have on the whim, but I will take this coffee coffee table hit and let me reverse that. And if I reverse that and line it up right. Uh, right to the sub, it might sound like a whoosh. That's sick already. That's so sick. <laughs> awesome. That's really cool, actually. Let's add a little decapitator to that. Let's play around with it a little. Pitch it down. Uh, where are you? Using the wave sound shifter pitch. Add a little reverb to that too. compress that too but let's throw that compressor up at the top of the chain I could go on for hours. That's kind of the gist of making these subs though, like, I do use a fair amount of tools, but like using Submarine that like really makes things get into that territory of like low information. So if you kind of record, you know, different hits like I did in my apartment and you throw them into that, I mean, you can make, I feel like you can almost make anything a sub like that. Like you can make some, some cool sub sounds. Like I feel like this, 
Like, I think that's pretty cool already. Like, let's just go ahead and bounce that out real quick. What are we gonna call this? Let's call this... This is the hardest part. I like looking around my room to figure out names. Like, I'll look at items and I'll look at, like, words on, like, books and stuff like that just to get inspired. All right. Probably not the coolest name, but we're gonna call it Port. Because I've got a Passport application on my desk right now. And that's where that idea came from. So, let's go ahead. Let's... Let's make one more real quick. Let's use one of the, the oven samples. So, with everything turned off, it sounds like this. Okay, cool. Let's turn on submarine and a little bit of uh, compression. Let's play around with that a little bit more. Moving on, something from the uh, the washer. Sick, so sick. I personally dig that. Let me clean this sample up real quick. Do a little fade. You don't want any pops or clicks, so it's nice to kind of fade. Uh, fade your samples in and out just to make sure everything's like clean and smooth sounding. Let's bounce that out. Let's call it. Let's call it dumpster because it kind of sounded like hitting a metal dumpster. Cool. And there you have it guys. That's kind of a quick way to make sub booms using Waves uh, Submarine plugin. Hopefully you found it cool. Hopefully you can make sub booms that sound way cooler than mine. I've also gone ahead and just made about 10 of these samples. I didn't want to show the process for every single one. I felt like this video would be like super long, but I wanted to make a couple in the video and then make quite a few more afterwards. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kinda highlight some of the samples that I made. Uh, I'll show you those. And then also I'm gonna kinda package this up and make it a, a little sample pack and it'll be free on my website. So if you want some free subs to use from your music, uh, you can go to the link down below and download them for free. I just felt like this is cool and I kinda wanted to share this uh, bit of information with you guys. So hopefully you like it. Thanks for watching and I will uh, see you guys next time. Bye.